Now here's something we've been waiting for for a long time. Well, a lot of us has. So right here we have Reason Compact by Propellerhead. Yes, yes, yes. Propellerhead has finally done it. They have gone over to wait. There are no drums in here. Why are there no drums in here? Uh, Hannah? Hannah? You are going to put drums in here, right? <laughs> most likely, yes. So I know that this is the feature that most people want to see when we have released. And that is something we are looking into. Right, so I don't need to lose my mind over it. Okay, so I guess it's something to look forward to then. Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jakob Hack, I'm your host, and you're watching a very happy Jacob in a very happy Hack Attack episode because Propellerhead has finally started moving some of its uh, technology over to iOS. Yes, I know they've done it before with figure previously and also Thor, but right here we have something called Reason compact and right now it is rather compact since there is only one synthesizer in there and no way to make drums however as hannah said they're looking into it and personally you know in my opinion i would be rather surprised if they didn't add that in the future seriously <laughs> The synthesizer in here? Well, it's actually an iOS version of Europa from Reason. Now, there are some limitations to the iOS version compared to the uh, desktop version. However, all the main features that are in the original Europa synthesizer is there. And so what you have is a really powerful synthesizer. And so stick with me because we're going to get into the Europa synthesizer in Reason Compact. We're also going to have a look at some of the sound packs available via in-app purchases. One of them being mine. Yes, yes, I made sound for this thing. And you'll also be able to hear from the product manager herself because I did an interview with her. And, you know, we're gonna start with that. So I'll let Hannah here introduce herself. My name is Hannah. I'm a mobile product manager at Propellerhead, uh, meaning that I'm responsible for our mobile apps. I have two Master of Science degrees, one in computer science and one in interaction design. So my background is very technical. I think I am the only one here at Propellerhead that is not uh, like good musician. I have been working as a product manager for the last 10 years, so that's why they brought me in. I started to learn about all things about music production when I started at Propellerhead. So I just took this course at Berkeley this spring called Music Production 101. Since I started at Propellerhead, I've been using all the mobile apps there is, I think, yeah. And I'm smiling and I'm sitting on the bus and I play. I got my kids playing. You know, I have this rule that they are not allowed to use the screen every day. But then when they say, can I make some music on your phone? I'm like, always oh, yes, <laughs> of course. Before we dive into the synth, I know my viewers, I'm guessing you want to know about the ins and outs of Reason Compact. Does it sync? Does it have MIDI? And so, here we go. What you have is inter-app audio compatibility, so it can connect to stuff like Audiobus or Arm, for instance, or even Cubasis or other apps or DAWs that can actually talk inter-app audio, so that's good. Now, Reason Compact doesn't have an audio unit extension mode, so you can't load it up like that. And that's something we can hope for for the future, I guess. Ableton Link Sync? Question mark? Yes, it does have Ableton Link Sync. Okay, so MIDI. Reason Compact does not have support for MIDI. 
And that's really something I do hope that Propellerhead considers adding into their app sometime in the future. Because I really like being able to control my stuff um, with MIDI controllers and being able to play it on a keyboard and stuff like that. So what about automation then? Well, there is no way of recording knob movements or fader movements inside Recent Compact. Well, not yet at least. And I think that that might also be added in the future, but that stands for me, that's my opinion. But even if you don't have automation right now, you do have some powerful modulation features. So there are two LFOs in there and two really interesting, powerful envelopes. Th those envelopes are mad. <laughs> So how about export functions? Well, you can export your um, music, whatever you make inside Reason Compact as a WAV file to other apps using the opening command. You can also, if you are an owner of Reason 10 for desktop, then you can export the project and import it there. You can also export the individual sound patch from the recent compact version of Europa and import it into the original version of Europa inside Recent for desktop. Now, there are actually some features in here that you find inside Reason, and I'm talking about the chord and arpeggiator modes here. These are two really useful players that will allow you to create chords and melodies very easily. We wanted to have a tool which makes it super easy for you to make small melodies and chord progressions. So we took uh, the two players from a uh, reason called Dual Arpeggiator and Scales and Chords and used them within the app. So it should be easy to create chords. And also then the chords can be fed into the Arpeggiator and then it can do small melodies. So we have an uh, iOS developer and we have also one of the most uh, senior Reason developers in our team because we have brought a lot of the technology from Reason into the mobile. So he has worked on like kind of transforming the code so we can reuse the same code in both Reason Desktop and on Reason Compact. Then of course we have a full-time designer in our team doing both the UX and the UI and a test leader. So we know everything is tested and works as it should. Right, so Reason Compact is a freemium app. So you can basically just download it today for free and then you have inner purchases like um, unlocking the full synthesizer engine inside Europa and also inner purchases for sound packs. But we're gonna start with having a look at the sound engine because this thing is insane. Yes, yes, it really does a load of different types of synthesis. To break it down, it's a wavetable synthesizer, but it does wave shaping synthesis together with FM synthesis and subtractive synthesis. So the capabilities of the synth itself is so wide. Want to do some old school synthesis? Well, what you do is you go to the wavetable here and then you practically have a load of different waveforms to choose from. And so if you just want to do some basic analog subtractive synthesis, you just choose the analog waveform. And thanks to the wave shaping synthesis, you can actually morph this thing. So you can go from a sine wave to a triangular wave to a square waveform. And then you have the filter. And as soon as you start pulling down the cutoff, you're doing subtractive synthesis. And 
the thing is you have two of these awesome sound generators. Plus you can modulate the, uh, the wave shaping with LFOs and envelopes. And then you have individual unison modes for both sound generators. Just look at this thing. Next page is like a mixer and then the filter and then the amp envelope out. And then we have the modulation envelopes and LFOs. The most interesting modulation feature in here, oh, it's the envelopes. Now check this out. Each of the envelopes have a uh, preset thing here. And so if you open it up, you can see all the various interesting, very detailed waveforms that you can use. And not only that, you can actually draw your own stuff in there. <laughs> oh, just love that stuff. And on top of that, you also have a page with effects. So you've got a really nice crunchy distortion unit in there. You have a delay section and a reverb. Now, if you're not like me and you don't really like making your own sounds, you don't have to. You could just use the in-app store and purchase some preset packs, inclu including mine. I'd be happy if you, if you get mine. <laughs> Right now there are five sound packs in there. One of them you get for free. It's the default sound pack that comes with the app basically. And then there are four artist packs. Now I wanted to know how Hanna went about just finding these musicians uh, for, for making the presets for Reason Compact. So I wanted to have this mixture of female and male sound designers. There are a lot of like women in artists, but not so many producers that are known. And when I looked at Propeller's earlier work, we had worked with very few women and none of the sound designers from before were women. So I wanted to discover the best female sound designers. And Tiger, I got contact with from Lars who works here, who is a music producer. And she, he said like, you know, one of the best music producers I know, her name is Tiger Darrow and she lives in New York. Do you want me to put you in contact with her? And so I got her email. And then, have you heard the uh, Music Prod Pod then? It's a podcast about music production. So I sent them also a direct message on Facebook and I asked them like, do you know any awesome female music producers? And then I got Theodora's name. And then I knew you. <laughs> and I wanted to, like, I have seen your videos and I wanted to have uh, your sound. And then the... Uh, the guy that have made our default patches, Spio, we have worked with him before and knows that he knows Europa very well and he's really good at making patches. So you are from all different corners of the world, but I'm trying to find the best I could find. <laughs> When I prepared all the material I needed, I actually did another interview with Tiger Darrow herself. Now I asked Tiger specifically about her own sound pack that she made for Reason Compact. Because when you play with her sounds, you begin to realize that each preset could be used for making a track. Something she confirmed and I also asked her if she had produced a track with it. I haven't actually made a track with it yet. Um, I have yet to challenge myself to do that, but they are all elements that I tend to mimic using other synths as well. So I tried to figure out, okay, if I'm approaching producing something, what are my, my go-to elements that I try to use? I try to use unconventional hats. I try to use some sort of low pass groove kind of thing, maybe a pad that's side-chained really hard. Um, some sort of lead ultimately at the, for like this big grand chorus at the end of the song. Um, so I just recreated what all of my go-tos were using Europa essentially, um, which was a really fun task.
Now, I just want to clarify something here regarding the Europa synthesizer. As I said earlier, I did mention that this is an iOS version of Europa or Erupa, as we say in Sweden. And that means that it's been um, optimized for use on iOS. The original version of Europa has three oscillators, wave shapers, oh God, just three sound generators. And the iOS version has two. Same with the envelopes, the original one has four, this one has two. Now, the original version of Europa also has a routing matrix, and that's not available inside the app. And I'm guessing that they made it this way so they wouldn't tax the CPU of whatever device you're using recent compact on. I mean, you want to have some resources left for whatever extra instruments you might add in the future. Again, I'm just guessing here, so I don't really know, but yeah, it's all very logical, isn't it? Right, there's a few things more I just want to get to. So if we check up here, we have like a bar full of uh, basic features like a record button, a play stop button, a quick access to the uh, sound pack shop, file manager right here. And oh, by side dragging on uh, one of your projects, you get to either rename it, copy it or just delete it. The app has an autosave feature, so you don't really have to think about saving all the time either. And then if we look over here, we have uh, the uh, sequencer window. And I won't be talking about this one too much because I absolutely, <laughs> I absolutely hate it. Because it's a top-down piano roll, just like the one in Oxy. And I absolutely do not enjoy working like this. It could be working really well on a phone since you're holding it in a portrait mode all the time, makes it easy. But for someone who has been working with side scrolling sequencers and piano rolls for over 25 years, no, just no. By the way, the basket icon here, it's simply to delete the stuff uh, that you might have recorded in this uh, sequencer. Uh, okay, so let's give some credit where it's due. You know, a top-down scrolling piano roll might not be such a bad idea on a phone. I mean, when you're holding a phone like normally, then it's kind of a natural thing to be using your thumbs uh, for everything, right? Even when you're holding it with two hands, you have two thumbs at your disposal to actually work with. Unless you're like me, you're, you're gonna instantly flip the phone when you take photos or when you film or, or when you're using apps and stuff. But most people, they just tend to hold their phone upright. And so in that case, a top-down scrolling piano roll yeah, it really works. Yeah, it, it works for those people. Yeah, it works for them. Good for them, but not for me. And while we're on the subject on uh, making music with phones and stuff, you know, when I talked to both Hanna from Propellerhead and also Tiger Darrow, who made sounds for Reason Compact, they both told me that they both use Apple iPhone 7s. And so, of course, I just had to ask them what they thought about the lack of a headphone port. So, Hanna, what do you think about that? Oh. Oh, I have such a problem to remember to bring that little adapter with me everywhere. Because you cannot have it on your phone all the time. You cannot have it on your headphones. Because then you cannot listen to the com in the computer. So where should that little uh, thing live? Yeah, that's why I stick with an iPhone 6S. So what about you, Tiger? No headphone port, good or bad? Uh, it it kind of sucks. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's the short answer. <laughs> I don't have Bluetooth headphones either because, like, that's not... I'm going to forget to charge those, so... <laughs> Thank you. 
Lastly, we have these three dots and here we can find the tempo setting, the scaling setting, an on off switch for the metronome. We can change out the note grid and the loop length at the moment can only be up to eight bars long. And Propeller, I really do hope that you plan to increase this number to at least 16 bars because 16 bars would be absolutely great. Here you can also restore your purchases and you have your settings for the Ableton Link Sync, a setting for the background audio and then of course the export choices. Yeah, I'm super excited to see what Propellerhead has in store for Reason Compact in the future because uh, I just, I can see this thing turning to something crazy. Go get it, go test it out for yourself. Uh, you can find a link down below and I want to send out a big thank you to Hannah and everyone also at Propellerhead who collaborated with me um, it, so that I could get all the great material that I needed for this video. I also want to send out a special thanks to, to Tiger Darrow, one of the best music producers out there. So thank you for the interview. <laughs> I do wish that I had had like more time over because I would have loved to interview the other ones making the sounds like Speo and also Theodora. Yeah, but there just wasn't time. So uh, at the time I'm recording this, I only have one and a half day to actually edit the video. So I do hope that I did have time to finish everything until Tuesday, uh, which is the release day for Reason Compact, which is today, if you're watching it today, uh, that's gonna become messy very, really fast. I wanna thank you so much for watching. Did you like the uh, interview bits? Did you like the video in overall? Did you like the overall video? If you did, then just go press that thumbs up because every time you interact with my video, press the thumbs up or you comment. Well, it makes YouTube's algorithms just push my content out further to more and more people. So I'm always grateful for that. Now, if you want to support in other ways, then you can always share my videos on um, social networks uh, or forums, wherever you might see that there's a need for someone to see one of my videos. I made that sound weird, okay. Um, and if you wanna help in supporting in a financial way, then you can do that through Patreon, where I just added another tier. And that tier uh, basically gives you a um, role on my newly started Discord server. Yes, I started a Discord server with multiple channels on them and a few of them are locked because they're voice channels. So if you want to chat like voice chat, you have to choose the $5 tier. I'm sorry, but that's what I have to do. I have to find other ways of making up for what Apple took away from the affiliate thing. Um, and th that's one way of doing it. But if you're okay with text chats, then you can join my Discord server for free today by going down in the description box, finding the link that I put there. I, I, th I think I made it so that it would never expire. So anyone pressing that invite link to my Discord channel should just be, you know, be able to join up uh, instantly. If you already have an account, if you don't have an account, just, um, just make an account. It's free. Discord is perfect for stuff like this. And I'm on Discord uh, a lot, but there aren't that many members yet. I'm hoping there will be. Again, if you wanna join the free chat, do it today, link down below. And if you want the voice chat, then support me on Patreon, choose the $5 tier and and you should be assigned the uh, Patreon support role immediately. If not, uh, I might have to fix that manually, but yeah, we'll, we'll make it work out. If you don't want to do Patreon, then I've got a PayPal link, so you could do a one-off donation if you'd rather do that. And if you don't want to do that, then why not go check out my Bandcamp? I'm releasing a new track each month, it seems. If you find something that you like, then buy one of my tracks. That's also one way of supporting me directly. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. All comments and ratings are very much appreciated. As usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it.